Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you were just tuning in, you uh, you missed a good first half of the show. We started off our show talking about the running back market, how it has done basically a complete 180 since the beginning of last season when all the running back craze of, oh, you can't pay a running back, really took the public by storm. Uh, a lot of running backs have been paid, including Saquon Barkley, including Josh Jacobs, including Tony Pollard, and including Derrick Henry signing today with the Ravens. Uh, Aaron Jones was also signed to the Vikings. There is a lot of running backs being signed. We covered all that in the first segment. In the second segment, which we just wrapped up, we just finished talking about the Brian Burns and Carlton Davis trades. Brian Burns traded to the Giants uh, for a second and a fifth, and excuse me, being paid uh, five years, $150 million, 87 and a half of which is guaranteed. So a big payday for him, something he deserves. We broke all that down in the second segment. Coming up in this segment, we are going to talk a little bit about quarterbacks, focusing around the effects on Justin Fields and the Bears. Uh, it's been a really interesting situation with them. Obviously, it's been developing all season, but... Uh, It's, it's been an interesting development all offseason. It's been the big story. Obviously, free agency just started. There's been a lot of Justin Field talk all offseason long. We're going to do a little update on where that sits with all the uh, quarterbacks that have been signed to quarterback needy teams and where he might end up now. But before we get into that, remember, if you would like to be a bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation. A uh, message will pop up on the bottom of the screen for you, me, everyone else in the world to see that is watching. That includes people on YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter, X, whatever. Uh, but yeah, everywhere we stream, not just you, not just, uh, not just the people in the chat with you, but everyone can see it. We'll have a little conversation. Again, that link is gsmcpodcast.net. We appreciate everything that you do give, uh, and we appreciate you for watching. Uh, but like I was saying, let's just get right into that segment. Justin Fields, the Justin Fields saga. I'm going to give you a brief synopsis, and then I'm going to give you uh, where we're at. For those who have not been following, uh, I don't know if you have been following football at all, but if you have, you probably know at least the basics of this. The Bears have a quarterback, Justin Fields, who is iffy on whether or not he's a true franchise starter in the league. He's shown flashes, but he hasn't been able to really put it all together and prove that he is, you know, that guy. Uh, but the Panthers traded their number one pick to the Bears this year F to draft Bryce Young after a very similar situation was happening last offseason. They chose Justin Fields. This offseason, they have the number one pick again, and they are choosing between a prospect in Caleb Williams, who is generational, uh, and Justin Fields, who has been their quarterback, has a lot of fan support, and a lot of uh, team support throughout the league. It's been an interesting situation. There's a lot of rumors that where he could have gone, and the big teams that needed quarterbacks that seem like they'd be good fits are seemingly all off the board now. Obviously... Uh, the biggest fit and the biggest rumor for him uh, where he was expected to go was the Atlanta Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons have now filled their hole at quarterback, signing uh, Kirk Cousins to a four-year deal. Uh, Kirk Cousins is coming off a torn ACL, a torn Achilles, excuse me. Uh, I don't think it'll affect his game too much simply because he's not a very mobile quarterback. As long as he can step and generate power, it should be fine. And I know that's not always what happens when you're coming off an Achilles because the Achilles helps you with that uh, twist motion. It really it helps you plant your feet and do and make those moves. Uh, so we'll have to see how he heals, but I think he'll be just fine. He is a little older, 35, but if he's there, the Falcons have a quarterback who is arguably top 10. He's never been the most exciting guy, but he's always gotten the job done. He's always been a top-of-the-league quarterback, top-half-of-the-league quarterback, no matter where he goes, whether that be Washington or Minnesota. He's always had these teams competitive. Um, and for a team like the Falcons that hasn't really had that in a long time, after dealing with a season with Taylor Heineke and Desmond Ritter, 
it's going to be a huge step up for them. So that takes the Falcons off the board. The second spot that he was rumored to go to was the Pittsburgh Steelers, who went out and got the other big prize of free agency uh, in... There we go. We were just talking about it. Levante David got signed. We'll talk about that in the next segment. Uh, like I said, all the news that has been broken, we'll talk about in the fourth segment. Sorry, I've been really trying to keep to that rule, but we just talked about that. Anyway, uh, the Steelers signed the other main prize, if you can call that, of the quarterback market in uh, Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson, who is coming off not the greatest season, but it was a pretty average season. You know, you look at the numbers, he didn't turn the ball over too much, and him going to a team like the Steelers, he doesn't need to be amazing. You know, they made the playoffs last year with the combination quarterback play of Kenny Pickett and Mason Rudolph. Uh, so it's not a team that needs the greatest quarterback plays. That defense is one of the best in the league, and it continues to be under Mike Tomlin, that culture that he has made. I'm curious. that That's the part that I am unsure about. If he can be able to listen to Mike Tomlin, I think they're going to be fine. But Russell Wilson had a lot of rifts with the coaching staffs, not just in not just in uh, Denver with Sean Payton, uh, who clearly did not like Russell Wilson, but even in Seattle a little bit. It was masked by the fact that they were winning, but there were lots of there were there were a bunch of stories over there where, about Russell Wilson being a being a, uh, not, not agreeing with Pete Carroll. Uh, so there's, there's a, there's not really a lot of spots left. Uh, the other big spot that I've seen out there is the Raiders and the Raiders are an interesting one. It, I don't think they're out of the question in that Justin Fields market, but they did sign Gardner Minshew. They brought Gardner Minshew in a guy who has been, he was a starter his rookie year, uh, in Jacksonville and then they drafted uh, Trevor Lawrence, and he was relegated to be a backup. He went to the Philly. He went to Philly. Was a solid backup, and then he was the emergency starter for Indy last year, and he almost led them to a playoff spot. Uh, just a dropped pass away from leading them to a playoff or a, a berth. Gardner Minshew is a very interesting quarterback. Where you, he's good when he's on the field, but he he reminds me of Tyrod Taylor. A guy that wins, but isn't the guy you want leading your franchise. Uh, Tyrod Taylor is another guy that's been very successful as a backup. He was just signed to the Jets uh, for some pretty solid money as well. Uh, but he and Gardner Minshew are very similar to me uh, in the role that they kind of fit on a team. So he goes to the Raiders. He's competing with Aiden O'Connell, who took the reins at the end of last season. They cut Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, which I don't know where he's going to end up, if, if he's going to end up somewhere. Uh, there's a lot of quarterback questions out there still. But the Raiders still, I think, have a chance of maybe trading for Justin Fields. Like I was saying, they have Gardner Minshew, who if I had to close my eyes and pick one right now, he would be the starter there. I don't really love what Aiden O'Connell brings to the table, I know he won a couple games last year, and he was just a rookie, but he's he's not really my favorite kind of quarterback prospect. Uh, so there's going to be a quarterback battle there, and I'm not sure if they want it to be a three-way battle bringing in another guy like Justin Fields, especially having invested so much in that position already. You know, you gave uh, Gardner Minshew a two-year, $25 million contract, and you drafted Aiden O'Connell last season. There's still a possibility that they could draft another quarterback. Uh, it doesn't seem that likely because the Broncos are ahead of them as, as well as some other quarterback needy teams that seem like they're going to draft a quarterback. Um, but there's there's a lot of there's a lot of options there for the Raiders to do. They're still in contention. The other two teams that I think have a shot or make sense to trade for Justin Fields are the Broncos, who most likely, are going to draft a quarterback. They seem to have their eyes dead set on J.J. McCarthy, and they are probably the team that's going to be able to get it, get him. Uh, I'm not a big fan of J.J. McCarthy. I'd much rather have Justin Fields, but that's a topic for a whole nother day. We are on Justin Fields and where he can go. 
but the 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 Broncos are a good spot for him. You know, they don't have a quarterback, right? That's one of the few places in the league right now where they don't have a quarterback. It's one of the few places in in the NFL where they don't have that bona fide starter the Raiders and the Broncos are. There's one other spot that is really interesting to me. And I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this fit cuz I think this is probably his best fit, honestly. And the issue is it's probably not going to happen because they're in the same division. The Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings have gone out and they they lost Kirk Cousins. It's a big loss for them. The Vikings, a team that seemingly are trying to compete. They have the roster built to compete. They've made a couple moves. They brought in Aaron Jones. I've really liked their offseason so far, uh, aside from losing a guy like Kirk Cousins, but you can't do anything about that. They bring in Sam Darnold, who... Again, I'm just not moved by. I'd love to have him as my backup. I'd love to have Sam Darnold as my backup, but as my starter, I'm just not moved by him. It's it's just not the type of guy that if I'm trying to compete, I want on my roster as my go-to guy. So them trading for a guy like Justin Fields, I think would make a lot of sense. You have a veteran in Sam Darnold behind him in case anything happens. But more than that, you put Justin Fields in an offense with those kind of weapons, with Justin Jefferson, with Jordan Addison, with Aaron Jones in the backfield. Uh, that offensive line is really solid, and the, the, the wheels that Justin Fields has with that Kevin O'Connell offense, they're going to really be able to open it up. Kevin O'Connell comes from, I believe, the Sean McVay tree, and I mean, we've seen what that tree is able to do with those special talent quarterbacks. Obviously, Sean McVay has Matthew Stafford right now, but if I was Justin Fields, if I was the Bears, I wouldn't... If I was the Bears, I wouldn't want to trade him to the Vikings because they're in division. But I think that's just the best fit for him. You take a look around the league, where else is he going to go? You know, the Raiders and the Broncos are both options, but they both seem like they've invested too much or are dead set on another option, you know? And the other the other two big teams that were rumored to be in on him, the Steelers and the Falcons, have already found their quarterback for next season. So it kind of puts the Bears and Justin Fields in a no-man's land because the Bears are still doing their due, dil due diligence on Caleb Williams. They seemingly haven't made a decision yet. Um... They're make they're going to go to his pro day. They're going to have him up for a visit. They're doing the full evaluation, which I understand. This is not a decision to be made lightly. This is not a decision to be like, oh, I think I like that guy better. This is change the face of your franchise level decision making. Uh, and you have to get this right if you don't want to get set back another five years. You know, uh, Either way, if you get it wrong, it sets you back five years. If you get it wrong and Justin Fields is the right answer and you go with Caleb Williams, you know, you're stuck with a worse quarterback for four years. If you do decide to keep uh, Justin Fields, and it turns out Caleb Williams was the right choice, you just have to live with that fact for the 15 years he's in the league, and you have to wait until Justin Fields' contract is tradable, because he's going to have to get signed after next season. It's, uh, it's not a situation that I envy the Bears for. Uh, they are in a tough spot, but the Vikings are one of those last teams in the NFL that I think have a fit for him, um, at least as a starter. Now, there's plenty of teams he could, do, he could go to as a backup, and I think there's plenty of teams that would love to have him as a backup. Um, but I'm sure he wants to be a starter. He doesn't have much choice since it is a trade. But it is interesting to see exactly what is going on with that, uh, with that situation in Chicago. Let me know what you guys think about this. Where do you think he'll end up? Do you think he'll get traded? Do you think, uh, e even if they do draft Caleb Williams at this point, do you think he'll get traded? It kind of makes me reminiscent of the uh, Baker Mayfield situation when they were trying to get rid of him after they brought in Deshaun Watson. And actually, I put a short out about this yesterday. Uh, and there was a comment in there that mentioned him going to the Browns, which I thought was interesting. The Browns don't seem like the type of team that would trade for him simply because they have that Deshaun Watson uh, they have that Deshaun Watson contract that is so massive on the books they really can't afford to bring another quarterback in 
uh, and they're kind of locked in with him. You have to kind of see it through. So I don't really see if that, I, that one doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but that is one that I heard from, directly from you guys, uh, the, just yesterday. So keep them coming. I'd love to hear your thoughts and why you think they're going to go there. Uh, but I think the Vikings are the best spot. I just don't think he's going to go there. He's going to probably be a backup on some team. Uh, they're probably not going to get much for him. They might even have to cut him. Uh, again, very reminiscent of what happened with Baker Mayfield and the Browns when he ended up going to the Panthers for like a sixth or a seventh round pick. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, in our next segment, we're going to finish off our show strong with all the breaking news that has been going on since our show started. There has been at least five or six uh, alerts that I have been uh, stocked in the back of my brain just for special for this segment so we can talk all about it, break it down. News is continuing to break. Stay on your toes, guys. The NFL is going crazy. The offseason is just starting. It's a wild ride. Uh, thank you, everybody, so much for tuning in so far to uh, Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. Stick around through this third and final break. We will be right back. 